Hello, this is Julia Whittup with Talk Story TV, and I have with me this morning Marilyn Redman, and Marilyn's going to talk to us about her personal and professional experiences with mind control. So, good morning. Good morning. Glad to be here today. I'm glad to have you, and I'm very interested to hear about you had an experience this morning with attempted mind control, it sounds like. Well, yes, I did. You know, it's just been a long, long journey to move out of that position. Uh, I was raised in an environment that was very toxic, very controlling and manipulative, and so I know today you attract what you are. So guess what? I contracted more ma controlling, manipulative people in my life. Yes. And that included, and I know that uh, you asked me about the various places, but that included church and medicine and schools and different institutions. And I've learned that we have been very conditioned to be fearful and victims and in doing that when you feel that you don't have any worth and you are a very needy person and you feel helpless it's very easy to have somebody mind control you mm -hmm. you're, you're kind of like sitting prey <laughs> yes and don't you think that so much television watching almost conditions us to be susceptible to mind control I have come to understand it's purposely being done to be mind control and that that's where they want the population because then you don't think for yourself. You are a scared little victim and you just fall like a lemming right off the cliff. <laughs> and, uh, yes. and, and, you know, and, and that's what I, you mentioned professionally, that's one of the big issues I have with the clients that do come to me for, I do various kinds of counseling, spiritual counseling, regression counseling, into childhood ex trauma and experiences that put you in those places of thinking that you cannot speak up and have your own mind. And I also do past life regression, which I've just come through another understanding of one of my past lives of what has kept me in this attitude and, and victimization too for many years. So as we learn to outgrow that and put ourselves in situations that uh, conducive to positive, healthy, tox instead of toxic ways, but healthy ways to support us. We can outgrow it into finding our worth and our voice and our courage. And what I see is, is that uh, it takes a lot of time. It's a process. And the book I'm just, I just finished, Paradigm Busters, Reveal the Real You, gives the steps for how anybody can come out of this predicament. Uh, yes, I had a huge victory this morning. Uh, I woke up very uh, agitated. My feelings worked today. In those days, I didn't have feelings. <laughs> I just was a good zombie and a good robot to anybody around me, and they pulled the strings. And um, so, but this morning, I was feeling very um, much that I couldn't handle being badger. And I'm in a very healthy relationship of unconditional love compared to the domestic beast in and the domestic violence I lived in with 30 years. Mm -hmm. So today it's actually quite a healthy situation, and this is totally unusual. But this morning I woke up feeling, well, and when you're in a healthy environment, you can finally feel, for one thing. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, you know, the pieces came together, and I've done enough work on myself that I was able to speak up and say, I'm feeling battered about how you feel I should be handling my arthritis, and I'm tired of hearing about what you think I should be doing. Pound, pound, pound. I said it like a hammer on my head and used to do that to me all the time. Hammer me, hammer me into what he wanted me to believe and think and do. So I was able to share that I felt that way and that I didn't want to feel that way anymore, and I had a right to my own reality and that I didn't want that happening. And he was very taken back. Oh, he wasn't trying to bat. He didn't see it that way. And I said, well, recently when you were very grouchy, we were on a trip, uh, he was very scared about eye cataract surgery, and he got very grouchy and difficult at times. And I just started saying passion and love to him because I knew he was scared. Yes. And at the end of the trip, he said, oh, this has been a nice trip. Well, I said, I just want the same. I want you to give me the same reality and freedom and space that I gave you. 
and he was able to handle that and accept it. I went out of the house or beaten up <laughs> uh, and kissed me goodbye. Uh, <laughs> thanked me for sharing. And he, he didn't know he'd been doing that. And he said, then he says, do you want to change this week in our plans? And I said, no. I says, that's fine, and, you know, because he had hoped that uh, what we were going to do this weekend in a healing sense uh, would help my arthritis. And I know that today uh, our our conditions are very much from our mind, of where our mindset is. What he had planned isn't necessarily the solution, but I, I, you know, I had already made arrangements to go ahead and follow what he'd kind of planned and wanted to do, which is no big deal. It'll work out well. But I'm finding out that I was such a victim because of some very, very old, I do past life regression, so I know probably more about myself than most people. And that, I think, is a real good clue, is what you don't know about yourself is what runs your life. Yes. And when you find out that information, you're no longer in fear. You're no longer the victim to what those other people are trying to poke, push you into to be for them what they want you to be and to do for them and be their little slave, so to speak, uh, which I was a very good one. Uh, so you helping other people, your self-worth, and for me to fight it myself, to thaw out my feelings and actually be able to express them. It was traumatic this morning for me to actually speak up and express it because even though I know it's a fairly safe environment compared to what I've ever had, you just really don't know the results of what you're going to say, how they'll handle it. And so there's some apprehension about that. And, but it turned in when you're around healthy people that can handle it, it actually makes things better than to hold it in and to keep it stuffed and hidden and pretend and stay in denial. And yeah. so my book takes people through, tells my story, and then it tells about denial and all the steps of coming hope and faith and all the steps you need to do and the different principles of putting them into your life so that your life works for you instead of for other people. <laughs> so you find your own reality. How can someone even recognize that they are being controlled? Well, that's a really good question. I didn't know that was what was happening for years. Um, in fact, I just bought into it because that's what I was raised to do. Be the nice little girl, be the people pleaser, uh, you get hurt if you don't do it, so you do it anyway. Uh, you know, so I was very much conditioned, and then I went to a church that you learn to think in a box, so you don't think for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had what you'd call, most people call a bottom, where it was either live or die. My husband was trying to kill me. I was trying suicide. Now, that's pretty desperate. Yeah, thing. that's pretty close to death. <laughs> and I found out just in this last week how close to death I was because the medical profession had given me Valium, thinking it would help my anxiety. And it did help for a month. And then if anybody understands chemicals in the body, which medicine doesn't really address, uh, there's a little honeymoon period and then it works against you, which is the same way alcohol works for people. They have a really good, wonderful time at first with alcohol. I, I, I discovered that prescriptions in alcohol do the same thing on the body. There's no difference. So I had a wonderful time at, for a very short period of time and then pretty soon it stops your natural energy flow, the chi in your system, from being able to connect with the nutrients, a spiritual nutrition that you need to have a life-giving life. And, you know, the, it stops that um, most alcoholics are malnourished or people that have been on drugs a long time are. They do not get the value of the food or the supplements or the vitamins they're taking because it's stopped in their system chemically. So you have to be able to um, get your system into a place where you can actually feel and wake up to what's going on. And so in my bottom, I literally prayed to God, um, please help me, I really don't want to die. And uh, all of a sudden, doors started opening that I didn't even know were there. And I ended up in family treatment, which is codependent addiction, which I think most of us that are good victims, and when you say mind control, I think a lot of it has to do with codependency, which is an addiction to another person that if you're so needy, you have to be a barnacle and hang on to them for your survival. 
Mm -hmm. And so even though you're being abused, in my case, you know, it was battering and abuse and rape, um, you hang on to your abuser because that is a bonding, a negative bonding that is very hard to break. Mm -hmm. And so you don't just necessarily walk away from it. It's really kind of awakening up to, oh, this is what's going on and how can I change it? So <clears throat> by going to codependent treatment, um, I discovered I was very codependent, very needy, very yeah. helpless, hopeless, and no self, no self worth. And they taught me I wasn't a bad person; I was a sick person needing to get well. And so I said, "Okay, how do you get well?" And that's when I came out of them, starting to understand that I had been mind controlled, manipulated, and used and abused for other people. And my their wish was my command, so to speak. Uh -huh. So going, I went started going to Al-Anon, which is for codependency, and I've gone to CODA and adult children of alcoholics, and I, because my mother uh, was addicted to prescription drugs through her being paranoid schizophrenic, and my father being an alcoholic, uh, I fit the picture and the scenario very well, and um, what I know today is I never was in reality. I am just coming into reality of who I am, yeah. what's Marilyn about, how Marilyn ticks, you know, what's my purpose. These yeah. things are falling together big time recently. And it's walking into a whole new lifestyle, a whole new mindset where I'm actually feeling my life instead of other people's lives. Yes. <laughs> I have a life today, <laughs> and, and um, it's amazing to be able to have a voice today. I do, I'm a writer. I write a lot of articles. Um, my first book was Roses Have Thorns, and it chronicles the mind control I went through. Um, so I sent you a copy of that. Yes. And, and in fact, it's, it's currently going to be my uh, promotional contest prize, so if anyone's interested in winning a copy of Marilyn's book, go to TalkStoryTV.com and click on the contest tab. Thank you for that, and I'll be glad to send you some more if you'd like. Okay. And I've also I've done a lot of writing on ebooks uh, e on Amazon.com. I don't know if you read that file I sent you. But that helps people to better understand the ego and how we've been listening to the voices in our head that are fearful and reacting from the fear and how to move past the ego, which some people call ego edging God out, or past, you know, the not I, there was no love in my life. I was afraid of love. I was afraid to let it in. I was afraid everything I passed out was from my fear. And I tried to be a loving mother. I tried to be a loving wife. I tried to do all the right things. And what I know today is I just projected my fear out to all those around me until I finally could use the principles of the book I'm just getting ready to publish, Paradigm Busters. And today I can actually send out and project out the love from within me to others. In fact, I had a beautiful um, reward of that yesterday. My daughter called. She's looking for work and uh, told me something she wasn't planning to tell me. It was basically a secret, and I'm not going to talk about it, what it was, but that she felt safe enough today to express and share that deep message within her. With me, she felt safe enough to do that, comfortable enough to do that. There was a time when we couldn't communicate. And uh, it was very difficult for us to get along because she was trying to find her way, and I was, I was crazy. <laughs> 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 and and you know, so it was like a vinegar and oil for a long time between the two of us. And 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 yesterday, I just felt like, wow, she trusts me that much. I have changed. I am not the person I used to be. Uh, so it was a wonderful, wonderful time for me to realize it was a feedback to me to see that things are different today in my life. People do seem to listen to what I say, and I used to feel like there's a song in Chicago called Mr. Cellophane, and I used to feel like people saw through me, and I was not an entity. I was just existing and, and um, 
you know, like cellophane. It's cellophane. <laughs> yeah, and, and today I've had some marvelous recently experiences where I know uh -huh. I'm not cellophane anymore. <laughs> it's marvelous. <laughs> but, and you would say, it sounded like you were saying the start, all you can do is try to get your body more healthy so that you can wake up. That's part of it. What I've come to understand is that we have to move into being a whole person or a mature person and all of this mind controls about two little immature people playing a passive aggressive game. So I played the victim and my ex-husband and my family, they were the aggressors. I was the passive, they were the uh, overt, you know, overt people. And so as I learned to have a healthier life physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. I had to put my whole life together. Uh, a lot of people run on just brain power. A lot of people run on just, you know, emo they're so emotional, or in my case, no emotions. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I, even though I went to Sunday school all my life, and I was in church for years, 45 years before I left my original church and started trying others, um, I didn't really have a connection with the God of my understanding, a loving energy force inside so uh, that was sustaining me. I had nothing to sustain me. That's why I was dying. And the medicines that they were giving me were actually encouraging a lack of that connection. I know scientifically there have been, um, well, I can't think of the word, like x-rays where they can examine your brain. And, and they can actually identify that uh, where you like, where you meditate, what your brain's like, or whatever. If you take drugs, what happens? Spiritually, you're disconnected from a higher consciousness. So when you're on drugs, even if it's prescriptions in my case, you cannot connect with that loving force. And so to get off all prescriptions, all medications, anything toxic, and that includes your food. So when you, I look at labels very sincerely, and I write a lot about what's in food and how it affects you for your thinking and whatever and eating as healthy as you can not GMOs not fish farmed food um, all the different ways they're trying to perpetrate like fluoride in the water or now they're trying to put it in the milk for children all that oh, oh no. yeah oh, I'll tell you the latest stuff is just hairy scary about how they're trying to ruin all the food supply so that you cannot think properly and stay in this mind control because if you are, um, it's been proven scientifically now, fluoride actually reduces the IQ. And so I fought like tooth and nail in our local little community of water, co-op water company to keep fluoride out of the water. And they were going to try to put it in without a vote even. And we fought it and fought it and were successful. In fact, where I live is the best water in the United States. It's well water. It, w it went to a contest for three states, one. And then it went to the national contest, and so anybody that wants really, really quality, fresh, natural water, I live in Edgewood, Washington. We've got the greatest water in the country, and it's very important. In fact, what your body's mostly water. One of the things I have my clients do, and I do, is to put, if you're familiar with Dr. Emoto, and he was, mm -hmm. he was I believe do we know, I write the word love and gratitude on a piece of paper and face it inward on my bottle of water with a rubber band to hold it and that those words will li literally transform your water into a healthier vibration. He has a book showing the crystals of the different like well water for example of what it looks like with different words that are used around the water and if you have loving words around your water then the water will transform into a loving substance for your body to be healthy. So most people are drinking and eating a lot of fluids that are very toxic and actually keep you in mind control because they're eliminating your ability to think rationally and stay sane. Um, so what we're talking about is outgrowing our immaturity and when we start thinking in positive, rational ways, we have positive affirmations. I have a lot of affirmations in my book that I've just finished for people to affirm the truth of who they are because if you are under mind control, you're believing lies. You're not believing that you're a worthy person or that you deserve the best or that opportunities will come to you or 
I could go on and on. So yes, and we're running out of time. Okay. So anyway, so. when you emotionally change the old energy into love from the fear, and you get a conscious contact with that love to grow and enrich and expand in your life, you become a mature, rational, sane person. It's it's that simple, but lots of work goes with it. <laughs> Thanks for being with us today, Marilyn. Well, I really appreciated being here. This was a real treat. Then I'm going to cut her off.